the jewel. Tom Thomas, it's time to eat. Where did it go? Chusaka. Did you see this tiny little... I can't believe now I'm asking a dog. Tom Thomas, are you looking for us? Hey, Fixies, maybe you can help me. One of these stones is missing. And so? And so, this pin is very valuable. And so's the stone. If I don't find the stone soon, it's gonna be the end. Honey, your lunch is getting cold. There's no reason to panic. Your precious stone will be found. Wait a sec, can stones really be precious? Of course they can. Gemstones are the most rare and beautiful of all stones, but it's not easy to find them. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, people find them underground and inside of mountains. Brave divers go to the bottom of the sea to find pearls. People have performed heroic acts and committed daring crimes to get these precious jewels. The magical shine of gems can both enchant and ruin. Remember, only gems acquired honestly bring happiness. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Chusaka took it. She saw that it was valuable and hung. You're right. Chusaka? Give us back the gem, all right? Get it back, we said. Why are you making Chusaka angry? Because she has to give the stone back. What stone, Simka? One that calls a ton. Dogs are supposed to keep treasure safe, but this one eats them. Maybe you didn't look carefully. For example, did you check inside that flower pot? <laughs> this digging's just a waste. How could it end up in here? Because I know this is where we left it. Oh, is that so? All right, spit it out. <gasps> look at this. A diamond. This will look absolutely perfect on my pack-a-mat. But I was the one that found it. It will look perfect on mine, too. Let's bring our pack -a mats and try it on them. We'll put it here for safekeeping. Well, who could have taken it? <laughs> we still need to check inside of Chusaka. <laughs> you gotta be joking. She'll eat you up. <gasps> Going, huh? Inside Chusaka to get the stone out. No, like, don't, please. Ooh. I'm ready to do anything my friend needs me to. Huh? By any chance, are you looking for this? Huh? <gasps> Where in the world did you find it? I found a buried diamond. It looks like a diamond, but to be sure, we'll have to conduct a test. A raw diamond looks like an ordinary stone. But after cutting and polishing each of its facets, that special stone transforms into a rare and very expensive jewel that can adorn a necklace, a crown, or a museum's display case. The truth is, only a small part of all found diamonds is used for jewelry. It's because a diamond is also the hardest rock on the planet. That makes it perfect for cutting glass. Diamonds are used in making strong drill bits and cutting blades. Many important medical instruments could not be made without them. With the help of diamonds, it's even possible to drill through a mountain when building a tunnel. That's just how valuable diamonds are. They can cut a pipe and go well with a dress. Isn't it pretty? Only it's not a... Tom Thomas! We found a star! Oh, oh. And now it's gone. <sighs> to suck a degree! Thanks so much, Fixies! I was sure my precious present was gone. And who is the present for? Katya, I think she'll like it. Now, I've got to tell you, Tom Thomas, that's not a precious stone. You got nothing but glass there. I know.
But it doesn't matter. What? I was risking my life for the sake of a piece of glass? First, it was for the sake of your friend. And second, the cost of the gift doesn't matter. It's only the thought that counts. The Masquerade. So, Tom Thomas, did you choose a costume for the New Year's party? Not yet. These are no good. I've been a pirate. How about a vampire? Did that. And a knight? Mm-hmm. This year, I... I want to do something that's original. And what if... I know what! You can go dressed as me! As Nolik! Perfect! No one's ever gone as a fixie. Ever! Long, long ago, people would put on masks and dance in order to scare away evil spirits. In ancient theater, actors would change masks to play a few different roles. Everyone liked the idea of hiding their faces behind mysterious masks so much that people started organizing fun outdoor festivals called masquerades. There are countries around the world, like Brazil and Italy, that turn into one big masquerade ball during the holidays. Hey there, what are you making? A costume for a masquerade! Can you guess who I'm going as? Yeah, but why does it have to be Nolik? Because I came up with it. Fire'd be a much cooler costume. <laughs> That's not true. Stop arguing. I can go dress up as you and you. Now we're talking. <clears throat> Smart fixies wear glasses. <laughs> Your glasses are too small to even fit on his finger. They don't make glasses just like yours. What a cute fixie. Splendid. Not bad. Only if I were you, I'd add a backpack to your costume. Any fixie who's fashionable is wearing it. And maybe add my curls to it, please? Uh... If you don't, then our feelings will be hurt. Class! Did we cover everybody? Oh! We didn't include Simka! <gasps> and where are we going to find room for her? What can I do about it? I already got to get going. Then let's just not tell her. See you later, Tom Thomas. Thanks, guys. Kitty! What have you been doing all this time while I was busy loading up the confetti? Uh, we were doing our homework. And looking at this magazine? And talking? Yeah, all of that and more. <laughs> That's got to be the worst lying ever. Tell me what you're hiding. Have you lost your mind? Sorry, but there was absolutely no room left on Tom Thomas. That's not what I'm talking about. What is the number one rule for fixies? Well, what did we promise? We, we won't, won't let out our secret. secret. Right, but you just let it out. Now everyone will know. Tom Thomas wouldn't tell anyone about us. I hope he doesn't. Well, maybe. Everyone will figure that he's dressed up like some nutty candy. What kind of nutty candy has a backpack on and glasses? We're in real trouble. I thought the glasses looked sharp. So what are we going to do now? Call the professor, right? Or we should call Grampus or Papus. Ah! Don't panic. Let's wait till Tom Thomas gets back. There are many different types of masks, and some of them are very important. Medical masks are used by both doctors and sick people to reduce the spread of illnesses. Oxygen masks help people breathe. Fencers, hockey goalies, and boxers all use masks to protect their faces from being hit. The blue glass in a welder's mask is used to protect their eyes from dangerously bright light. Sea divers wear masks for swimming underwater. Without a mask, it would be very difficult to see the beauty of the underwater world. The masks that people wear at carnivals and parties? Well, they're just for having fun and putting everyone in a good mood. Or as a disguise, so that no one recognizes you right away. It can be a lot of fun to fool somebody like that. So how was it? It was great! They had a contest for costumes, and I won! Hooray, that's all. Say bye to us. <sighs> I 
I hope you won't be upset, guys, but I couldn't tell anyone that I was a fixie. Here's all I could think of. Grand prize for best costume, robotic toucan. Hey, come on. Do you think we look like toucans? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right there, fixie toucans. We've got work to do. Oops. Happy New Year. <laughs> The Rock. Tom Thomas is back! Hooray! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow! Is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A Fixie! <laughs> Fixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of Fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And Fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared. And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient Fixies will be discovered as well. That would be so cool. <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right. He could be our great-great-grandpoosh. Or our great-great-grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea. But what if our great-great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to. Time to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> Oh, our great-great ancestor, who came to us from an ancient home, be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... Everything. This is just a waste of time. Oh, uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, Lick, it's never going to work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. If, if you think, think a screw is nothing, nothing take it out, but just beware. beware. Everything will break without them with a little, little screw in there. Look, it's moving. It's impossible. It really did. If, if you, you think, think a screw is nothing, nothing take, take it out, but just beware. Tom Thomas, hey. Well, how was your camping trip? Uh... Seems to me quite a success. Yeah. So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. 
Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe in them. They just haven't found the right rock yet. But they'll find it. I know they will. Why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good trip. Why do we stop now? There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing gate, Fire. You have to let the train pass. Nolik, come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? I... Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop. Today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear! Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right! <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is blue is brown is gray. With polka dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right. What color's the car? Purple? If you say so. We got work to do. So take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. To avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. 
If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes, and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. All fixed. Tom Thomas, test it out. Turning the lights on. So, is it right? Yeah. Take your places. Colorblind Nolik. You know what you are? You're a fainer. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while it goes up here. Uh, what's a fainer anyway? <laughs> Water. Hi, I'm all ready. Nolik? He's gonna stay home like we agreed. Uh-huh. See you soon. Who is that? Nolik, it's you. I, I gotta go. I'll go with you. No, we've got... We've got an important job. Little kids aren't allowed. Why can't I help you? Because this work is very demanding. Only it's boring. And you're impatient, so you'll bother us. Huh? But I am patientist. Patient, son? I mean, patient. Like, totally patient. Prove it, then. How? See that, uh, water filter. You have to count how many glasses of water it cleans. How many do I need to count? If you can reach a hundred, I'll believe you're patient. Why do they need that filter? Why not just drink water out of the sink? Don't worry about it. You need to be counting. That was one. Without water, life is not possible. The human body is made up of two-thirds water, and people need to drink it all the time, but only when it's clean water. Water is transported from rivers and lakes into houses through pipes. Along the way, it gets cleaned of debris and dirt. But even so, this water might still contain toxic substances or harmful microbes. That's why people use filters to clean water for drinking. No bad stuff can get through this last line of defense. saying that I'm skin and bones. There you go. That's why you need to drink water. Drink some more. And some more. Come on, come on. That's all. I ran out of room. You have to have plenty of room left. Why do you care about how much water I'm drinking? Because I gotta count. How much water is going through the filter? I really gotta. Yeah, and what? It's gotta go through me for you to count it? I'm totally full. What am I supposed to do? I've been waiting here in the kitchen all day, but nobody's drinking. What's going on? <gasps> the filter is broken. You gotta call Simka right away. 415, 416, 417, 418, Simka, it's an emergency! What? The filter's burning! <laughs> You're really funny, Nola. Simka, he's not choking! Something's going on over there. We gotta hurry! Where's the emergency? Look! So, what's going on here? Great. Now we're stuck fixing the filter. It's not broken. The flashing red light is an indicator. It means it's time to replace the cartridge in the filter. 
Since ancient times, people have been coming up with ways to remember things or to not mix things up. Knots on ropes were used as reminders that it was time to pay back a debt or reap a harvest. People would cut notches into trees to help remember numbers. Later, people invented the abacus, calendars, and day planners. And now, things are even easier because devices can give us reminders. Alarm clocks help people get up on time. A loud oven timer can save a pie from burning. The green light of an indicator shows that a device is turned on and ready to be used. A red light shows the opposite. <laughs> Today, smart appliances can tell their owners what they need to do. Without them, humans can be so absent-minded. It's all ready! Tish! This cartridge is enough for another 2,000 glasses. 2,000? And what do I do about this? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Nolik, you've done a good job there. Way to go. Yeah? If you want, I can do it. Tom Thomas, want some water to drink? Uh-uh. I can't drink anymore. And I can't wait anymore either. <laughs> well, looks like his indicator is flashing on now. <laughs> <laughs> the star. And so, this is our solar system. And it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> and I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh -uh. It's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh, uh, uh. Somebody's jealous. <laughs> well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda. Hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph, because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> and now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. <laughs> your Majesty, your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm hmm He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Hi. 
Ah, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says, this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. What? Oh. <laughs> That's what we should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog Constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire. Here. VE73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> <laughs> the telescope. <gasps> Ooh, buggy. <laughs> that was scary. Is Nolik with you? He said he was going to help us out. Beautiful. Whoa, just look at all those stars. It's just like magic, this telescope. Splendid. The simplest telescope is a tube with two lenses. They gather and refract light. We look through a telescope at a faraway moon and see craters, mountains, and crevices on its surface as if they are very close. A telescope helps us examine stars and comets, distinguish the colors and shapes of planets, and find their moons. But it's only possible to look at the sun through a telescope if it has a special filter to protect your eyes from getting damaged. But what's really cool is that it spins! <laughs> No, really! Well, should we get going? Aren't we waiting for Nolik? He'll catch up. I'm gonna leave him a note. Nolik, we're in the computer. Hey! Here I am! Hello? Where is everybody? Until the telescope was invented. 
Then astronomers could finally see how our solar system is organized. The closest planet to our sun is a small planet called Mercury. Then comes the planet Venus, then our Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the furthest planet. Is it possible that life only exists on Earth? So far, not even living bacteria has been found on any of the other planets, let alone human life. But we'd like to believe that deep in space, someone is looking through a telescope, and just like us, dreaming of finding their outer space brethren. That's where it was! Come on out, Fixie Eater! We're gonna need to use live bait. Where are you gonna get it from? It's me? Nolik, he knows you already. Don't be afraid. We won't let him hurt you. There's no way. Fixie Eater, come out right now. Ah! I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. B -b Barely. Ah! Help me! Ah! Catching fire! Ugh! I gotcha! It's Buggy! That's who you just caught! Then where's the fixie eater? Did you see the monster? Look at those jaws! Just like the monster. Nolik, show us where you saw the fixie eater. Up there. I saw him through the telescope. Buggy, could you please go up to that corner over there? Uh-huh. And now yawn. <laughs> Take a look. Ah, the fixie eater. Poor Buggy, what do you think? The baby doll. Tula, you gotta get out. We can't all fit in here. This time we'll take a ride, and next time you can. And I'm by myself again? Hey, don't worry. I'm gonna be getting such a cool car later today, Tula. Will it be a big one? It'll be big enough for all of you. Tom Thomas. Here, your toy came, just like you wanted. Awesome! Wait, what is this? A baby doll? Uh, uh. Splendid! Mom, where's the car? Oh, it's gotta be some mistake. I'll find out for you. I'm calling them. Good to be a kid. People take care of you, feed you, buy you toys, and read you bedtime stories. But in return, you have to listen to adults. Go to preschool, then school, and always remember to put on a hat. All kids dream about being a parent, at least for a little while. Because moms, they're just superhuman. Human moms can do laundry, cook meals, iron clothes, and check their kids' homework all at once. Fixie moms can fix irons and hair dryers and can teach young Fixies how they can do it. It's a shame that you can't become a parent before you grow up, but you can have fun pretending to be one. That's why girls like to play with dolls. Boys usually don't like it, but I don't see why. Dads can be really cool, too. What am I supposed to do with this now? I'm not some kind of girl who plays with dolls. <laughs> hey there, come on now. That baby doll's a real cutie. Why don't you put it down and we can get back to racing? Wait, wait! The baby's hungry. He needs to eat. Tom Thomas, help me! No, I won't. Won't you please? He's crying. Don't you hear? Mama! Oh, Mama! <laughs> That's all? Story.
Lola, what happened? The dolly disappeared. How? Tom Thomas, have you seen him? Uh, no. I'm not watching after that boy. But what if something terrible has happened? My dolly's eyes were shiny. Toes and fingers tiny. He never acted whiny. I love my dolly so. Now my life is gloomy. How this happened to me? I can't find my cutie. My dolly's gone. Oh, no. Honey, don't be upset about the car. It's gonna get here soon. By the way, why did you put the doll in the cupboard? It was so hard to find. But is it still home? It's in the box over there. It's gotta go back to the store. My poor dolly's gone. Ma, ma. My dolly! We're supposed to send him back today. Oh. Only I told Mom that I'd rather keep him. Hey! And what about your big new race car? Later. Did you do all this for me? You know... Papa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the detective. All right, there that is. Wasn't it great that we got to stay after class and watch that movie together? Yeah, that film was great! That detective. What a guy! He figured out exactly who did it. <gasps> Solving a crime is not easy at all. But it looks like a lot of fun. Ugh, I think it would be so cool to go solve a crime. <gasps> Where's my lucky screwdriver? I can't do anything without it. Here we go. This could be the crime of the century. Detective Nolik, are you ready? But we're not. There's no escaping our fate, colleague. Our time has come. In order to become a detective or an investigator, you need to be very attentive and astute. Because detectives solve mysteries, find missing things, and detangle the most twisted cases. For instance, who ate the whole cake without permission? A real detective will notice the minor details right away. Crumbs under the sofa, a trail of paw prints across the room. By following the clues, a real detective will easily discover the thief. All right. It's time for us to figure out who stole the screwdriver. And the screwdriver, don't we need to find it? Not now. First, let's find the thief. Oh, look at that. It's Digit. Digit? Huh? Why are you back at the laboratory? Our school classes are over. I want to talk to the professor. I came up with the coolest thing to make. What cool thing? It's a secret. That's a bit hard to believe. All right now, suspect. What were you doing after school? What do you mean, suspect? There must be some mix-up here. You're trying to dodge the question? You want to change the subject on me? That's it. I'm leaving. No screwdriver, no experiments. Well... You want to take over for you, genius, and that's why you stole his lucky screwdriver. You're under arrest. The main qualities of a detective are intelligence and logic. Logic is an ancient science that teaches people to think with reason, to help them solve problems, puzzles, and riddles. Do you want to feel what it's like to be a real detective? Then try to figure out what I'm describing to you. I'm thinking of an animal that you can meet at home or on the street. It has a tail and it's long. You have any guesses? A dog, a cat, or a mouse? Uh-huh, there's not enough information yet. But what if I add that it meows and sleeps all day long? Then the answer is clear. A detective works the same way. He collects the facts, decides what's important, gets rid of what's not, and only then figures out the right answer. Understand? Then you're ready for another puzzle. Tell me, who doesn't belong here? A 
Are you gonna talk? <laughs> what funny mustaches you got there. Oh, it's a party, right? Mm-hmm. They arrested me. Is this a game you're playing? <laughs> Tula, you believe that a lucky object can bring good fortune now, don't you? Well, yeah. And what? Now it's clear. You helped Digit steal Eugenius's lucky screwdriver. Yeah, because you like lucky stuff. Arrest her. Tula, how long do I have to wait? Sipka, you gotta see this. We caught the criminals who stole the screwdriver from the professor. Cool, huh? Just awesome. Let's go, Tula. She stays here, under arrest. Yeah, I got it. Come on, let's go. We're not joking around. Oh, and exactly what proof do you have? What proof do I have? Well, uh... Just what I thought. You have nothing, Fire. She's their partner, of course. Nolik, arrest her at once. What did she do wrong? It's insane. Now do what I said. I won't do it. Ah, you're with them. Stand with the crooks over there. Hey, we're partners, aren't we? Now wait a second. I'm wondering if you were the thief. Me? Yes. Right. It's not me, I swear. I'm a detective. Ah, Nolik, please tell him. You put it away? In the warehouse? Oh, Elisa, I've told you a hundred times. Please, don't touch my mess. Uh, appears I was a bit off track. You'd have been better off looking for the screwdriver, detectives. That's what I told you. All right, we'll look for a new tactic to use on our next case. What do you mean on your next case? Where's my lucky soldering iron? So, Detective Nolik, shall we begin? <laughs> the Solar Eclipse. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Tom Thomas! What's that for? There's a solar eclipse today. Look, and I'm gonna watch it. That's so cool! And what do you need the box for? Simka, did you forget? It's dangerous to look straight into the sun. Huh? It's so... Oh. How long until it starts to get dark? Half an hour. We'd be happy to help you out with that, wouldn't we? Only one thing I don't get. The light will be gone? Like, gone forever? <laughs> How did you come up with that? There have been plenty of eclipses before this one. In outer space, everything is in a state of constant movement. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Sometimes the moon gets in between the sun and the earth and covers the sun. And so, for a little while, the sun no longer appears as a bright glowing sphere, but a simple black ball. <laughs> this phenomenon is called a solar eclipse. But a solar eclipse can only be seen by humans and fixies that are in its shadow while it's happening. But anything can happen. Like, what if something gets stuck? Then, would it stay dark forever? And when has that ever happened? It's happening now! Nolik, either help us out or stop bothering us. All right, look. This is the Earth, here, and the Moon, there. The flashlight's our sun. You see? The moon's shadow falls on the Earth. And now watch. When the moon starts to go, the light comes back. Did it get stuck? Just like I said, the end is near. The end of the light. It's just that someone should be more careful with the glue. It's possible to take an ordinary box and make a special device that was invented by people long ago. It's called a camera obscura. This clever invention was used by artists as well as scientists. It was the basis for the very first photo cameras. It's quite easy to make your own camera obscura. Cut out a small square on one side of a box, cover it with aluminum foil, and poke a little hole in the center of it. Put a sheet of paper on the opposite side. The light will pass through the hole and shine through the darkness. And on that screen, you'll see the eclipse. Only it will appear upside down. To see it, you'll need to look at it from above. 
but make sure not to let extra light in. Beautiful. And remember to be careful with those scissors. But don't you understand that it's scary in the dark? And it's impossible to live in it. Don't be a coward. You glow in the dark. But what about Tom Thomas? Is he gonna have to walk like this? Ah! Uh. You'll be able to light up the way for him. And if I run out of juice? I'll use my flashlight. And when the batteries run out? Relax, I'll find more. In the dark? No. We have to get prepared right now. Can you see the sun? Uh-huh. One minute left. You ready? A minute? What? Hold on. I'm not ready yet. I'll get charged a little more. No, I need to get those batteries. Ten seconds. Nine seconds. Eight seconds. What should I do? Six. What should I do? Five. Ah! Four. Three. Two. Marcia! Here it goes. Whoa. <gasps> it's totally beautiful. Nola, come on out. You'll miss everything. It's amazing. Class, it's so awesome that we did this. Look, look. Now the sun's coming back out. Show it to me. It really didn't get stuck. You mean the whole eclipse is done? It was cool, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Only I missed the whole thing. <sighs> well, you'll see the next one, right? If you don't get spooked again. You're not going to throw the box away, are you? I'll save it for you. I can use it to store something useful. Batteries, for instance. What if tomorrow's the end of the light and Nolik's not ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> Buttered bread. Tom Thomas, it's not right to eat when you're playing a game. I know your mom told you that. Come on, stop distracting me. Oh no, that's the game. Now that's what you call Murphy's Law, Nola. <laughs> no, that's the law of buttered bread. The law of buttered bread. <laughs> There's no way that's a real law. People say that bread always lands butter side down. Scientists laugh at that, but there is a grain of truth in it. First of all, a sandwich usually falls from the low height of a table, and so it only has time to make a half turn. Second, the side of the bread with the butter is heavier, and that pulls it towards the ground. And third, people remember the bad things that happen to them. So, they believe that butter bread always lands the wrong way. That's just goofy. I don't believe in that law. It's true, and not just for buttered bread, but any open-faced sandwich. Then let's do an experiment. We got tons of food in here. We just cover some bread with it, and then throw it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Dinesh! Well, jelly side down. Uh-huh. And the cheese went down. And the chocolate spreads out of luck, too. The bologna didn't do any better. Do you believe me now? Not yet. Let's keep going. We should try some other methods of throwing. Oh, that's everything. There's nothing left. No, there's still some turkey. Where did you see that? Here it is. Take some from this plate instead. Your mom already cooked it. Hey, turkey. Show them how you're supposed to fall. Aha! Didn't I, uh, tell ya? You vandals! Why are you throwing food all over the place? It's simply awful. Hey, give it back! Please, we're testing the law of buttered bread. You gotta be kidding. Your mom is gonna love you for that. Can you please put the sandwich on a plate already? It's too heavy for us to keep holding it up. Good. There you go. Tom Thomas, 
Do you have any idea at all how nutritious that turkey is? And delicious, I'd imagine. And turkey's a healthy food that has lots of protein, vitamins, and what do you call them? Micro elements. That's not all. Eating that turkey could make you grow. If you eat that sandwich, you could grow a centimeter. I think that's true. Yeah, and it'll give you some extra strength, which you're gonna need when you clean up your kitchen. <laughs> Humans eat food not only to make them strong, but also to grow and develop. Take a look at all these different foods. Do you think they have anything at all in common? Well, actually, they do. All foods contain nutrients like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Combining them properly is the science of nutrition. Foods with fats and carbohydrates give humans energy, while those with protein are essential for helping children grow. People love to eat food that is delicious, fresh, and assorted. Try to eat all sorts of good foods like salads and soups, cereals, potatoes, vegetables, and meats, and not just sandwiches. But when it's time for a little snack, a sandwich can be just right, and it's so easy to make. to all of our bread. There's only one slice left. I made an experiment. A real one. I see. Well, science requires sacrifice. And there's no doubt that scientific experience is way better than playing with the phone all day. Right? Mm-hmm. Can I have another piece of turkey? I don't know why, but I'm really hungry today. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, that's what I call Murphy's Law. No! That's what they call the law of buttered bread, Dad. Did you hear? The law is a law. The pencil. Well done, Tom Thomas. Your mom's birthday's today and you're still sleeping. Hey, what's that? It's a drawing, a portrait of his mom. In my opinion, this mom doesn't look very much like Tom Thomas's mom. Maybe he didn't get to finish the picture yet. He was tired and passed out. This is not good. We gotta do something. Ah, we can help him. The pencil's right here. A pencil has a lead inside. It's the lead that makes the drawing. Only lead doesn't grow on trees. It's made out of a mineral called graphite that's mined out of the Earth's crust. But how does the lead get inside a pencil? It's simple. Pencils are made with rods of lead and two wooden boards. Grooves are cut into the boards and the lead's placed in them. The halves are glued together and cut into pencils. The artist's tool is ready. This isn't gonna work. Oh, give me a place to stand, and I shall move the pencil through the air. Try and get it closer to the drawing. Uh, you gotta lift it up a little. You gotta push it harder. Uh, uh, uh. No, like, we're blockheads. Look, there's a pencil sharpener. A piece of lead! That's all we need. All right, let's check out how it was done by the old scores. By the great masters, like us. Yeah, she could use a little more hair. And a hat, too. And a bow around her neck. Beautiful. And your sock has got to be in there. Yeah, let's keep drawing. Tom Thomas, are you still sleeping? Fixies? No need to thank us. Uh, where is my drawing? What have you done to it? If Mom sees this piece of art you created, she'll go and faint. I know it. From happiness, right? 
Fright's more like it. Does that look like my mom? Uh, well, then give it to your dad. Your dad won't faint. I know it. But it's my mom's birthday, not my dad's. You gotta be kidding me. There's also a famous painting like that. It's called the Black Square. It's a classic. You don't think she'll like it? People want to remember the highlights of their lives. And so they take photos of nature, of their families, of themselves, even of the food they eat. People have been doing this even before the invention of photography, by drawing. An artist might draw the sun, a river, some apple trees, and soon he's made a landscape. And if the apples aren't on trees, but on a plate next to a vase, cup, or basket, then a still life is what it's called. If a person's in the center, then it's called a portrait. And when artists make pictures of themselves, it's called a self-portrait. Of course, it's easier for us to take a quick photo of things we pass along the way. But just like the old masters, we put a piece of our souls into our drawings. And if you draw more often, you'll see it for yourself. I promise you that. Maybe you could just give her one of your older drawings. Maybe you should just erase the mess you made of this one. That could work. Ugh. Erasing's gotta be easier than drawing. Ugh. Whatever. There's no way you can make it worse. Ugh. Hey, I think I know a way you can fix it. You can use the eraser for drawing. A portrait. Uh, portraits don't seem to work out too well for us. But a still life drawing is a piece of cake. Super! Uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Tom Thomas! Everything's on the table for breakfast. Mom, happy birthday. I drew this present for you. Thank you, Tom Thomas. What a lovely still life. So unusual. I tried really hard. We'll hang it up on the wall. Now, let's go eat. What would Tom Thomas have done without us? Yeah. Whenever you get into a jam, your real friends will always show up to rescue you. The heart. Where's my packet? It's not here either. I think my head's got a screw loose. Oh! Tom Thomas, why are you throwing your stuff around? Oh, because I got a real problem. What is it? I can't decide which club I should pick. Johnny signed up for robotics, and Katya's gonna be in chess. You call that a problem? Go with Johnny. And why not Katya? Uh, uh, uh. Then go with chess. But they don't have robots. My mom told me I should listen to my heart. Do you know how to do that? <laughs> I found it! See you. Gotta go. Nolik. Simka can tell you. She knows everything. The heart is the main pump of a living organism. It's a unique muscular organ with a multitude of blood vessels attached to it. The main function of the heart is to continuously move blood throughout the body. The human heart pumps about six liters of blood every minute, even though this pump is not that large. Make a fist. Your heart is about the same size as that. To make sure your heart stays healthy, you need to strengthen it with plenty of exercise and a healthy diet. Nolik, please come help me. Why me? Tool is stronger. Huh? Interesting. And do you know what is meant by the word heartlessness? Well, I think it's uh, some kind of human illness. May I? Tula. Heartlessness is when a human or a fixie leaves someone who has a problem behind. Uh, uh, huh? I, uh, 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 uh. <sighs> Thank you very much, young man. Uh, I mean, young fixie. Heartlessness, does it last forever? Of course not. We just need to help one another more often. Uh-huh. Uh, uh. Ah! Tom Thomas, my friend! Here I am. How are you? How am I? Why do you care? Oh, by the way, I found out how you can listen to your heart. You need this tube. It's called, uh... 
stethoscope? A stethoscope, but I don't have one. That's what I'm for. <laughs> the thing is way too tiny. Hmm. Ah, your mom must have one. Oh, yeah. Well? It's beating. Loudly. And what is it saying to you? Not a word. And now? It's beating. <laughs> huh? What was that? <laughs> This is just absurd. A heart can't talk. You know what? Why don't you just try again? Tom Thomas. <gasps> Who is that? It's your heart talking. Boom, boom. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. I believe that robotics is right for you. Uh... And what about chess? Who cares about chess? Robots are way cooler. This voice reminds me of someone. Heh, <laughs> so that's what you look like, my itty-bitty heart. Well, I did it from the bottom of my heart. When a human is at rest, his heart beats between 60 and 100 times per minute. This rhythm is called the pulse rate. Place two fingers on your wrist or your neck. Can you hear it? Boom, 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 boom. You can count the beats. When you're sleeping, your pulse slows down. But when you get excited, run, or get worried or afraid, your heart begins to beat faster and pumps the blood harder. Sometimes it feels like it's beating so fast that people say, oh, my heart is going to jump out of my chest. But don't be afraid, it's not going anywhere. And when people say, listen to your heart, they don't mean that your heart can talk. It means that you should trust yourself and listen to your feelings. And then you'll definitely find the answer you're looking for. Looks like at the end of the day, I'm heartless. I couldn't help my friend at all. Nolik, but you helped. You really did. I finally figured out which club I want to join. Robotics, like I told you? Not that. I want to learn medicine. Glue. No, like, let's split up. <laughs> We're one cool team, am I right? Nah. Why not? We're the mega super duper coolest team on the planet. What do you say we do everything together and never ever fight with each other? All right. Children, if you look right here, you can see that the handle has broken off the professor's favorite mug. And it's our duty to fix it by gluing it back on. <laughs> here they are, the inseparable friends. <laughs> yes, quiet down. Since the two of you were late today, why don't you go fly over to the warehouse for us and get the glue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they crack me up. <laughs> Is there any glue left in there? <laughs> Nolik, try jumping on the tube a little. I, 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 I. Uh -huh. Great, there's plenty. Our super duper team has done some super excellent work. What's going on? Our hands are stuck. We gotta pull. Ay, ay, this glue is sticky. With the help of glue, you can stick almost anything together. Paper, plastic, glass, rubber, wood, and even metal. The reason that glue works is because everything, even an ordinary sheet of paper, has a rough surface. Just look at those pits and ridges. If we take two sheets of paper, fill those pits with glue, and press them together, the molecules of the glue will start joining with one another. After that, all that's left is for the glue to dry. <laughs> Good idea. Everyone will laugh at how funny we are. <sighs> Heads up, everybody! <gasps> Mission complete! Well done. Take your places. And put
put your hands on your desk. We can't do that. We got glued together. It's all right. Come on over here. We don't want you to take our hands apart. We're sure this glue's going to make our friendship stronger, right? <laughs> you really think friendship can be measured like that? <laughs> Jump! One, two, three, yeah! Tish! Tish! I need to go over there. Well, I need to go over there. <laughs> it's your fault we got into this mess. Mine? And who was the one that told me to jump? Enough. I'm done with your nonsense. From now on, you're not my friend. And you're not mine, all right? substances people use, glue was invented by nature itself. For example, fish glue their eggs together, and mollusks produce a sticky liquid that lets them stick to any surface. A spider smears glue on its web. A swift uses saliva to bind its nest, while caterpillars use their saliva to spin their cocoons. The sap from a pine or a birch tree is glue, and an egg's sticky whites can be used as a base for glue. But today, most of the glues that people use are made in factories. When working with glue, it's important to air out the room from harmful fumes and to follow all other safety instructions. And try not to get glued to anything. It might be very hard to tear yourself away from it. Nolik, hang on! <laughs> You just saved me! But how come we got unstuck? Maybe it was bad glue? No, we were trying to get you disattached for so long that the glue lost the adhesive properties it had. And our friendship? Did it also lose its properties? You know what, Nolik? I'm sorry. We don't need glue to make our friendship stronger. Peace. Peace. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> the Pyramid. Thomas, can I open my eyes? Not yet. Hurry, will ya? That's it. I'm ready for the contest. Ta-da! Wait, that's a pastry! This is a pastry, Nolik. But this is an Egyptian pyramid. Oh, wow. Doesn't it look just like an anthill? Sure does. I remember when Grandpoos told us that inside of those is a labyrinth and a mummy of a sparrow. No, a pharaoh. The Egyptian pyramids are simply amazing ancient structures. The biggest one of them is the Great Pyramid of Cheops. It's more than 4,000 years old and over 100 meters tall, like a 40-story building. How it was possible to build such a giant way back then is still a mystery. There were no hoisting cranes in those days. Some people believe that the pyramids were built by aliens, but I have a feeling that they couldn't have been built without the Fixies' help. So, is there a labyrinth in there? Of course. Show me. You joking? I just put it together for the contest. No way I'm going to break this apart. Hey, isn't that a way in? Where are you going? I'm just going to look at the labyrinth. And the mummy. Mummy, what are you talking about? Well, which way now? Stop, you'll get lost. I won't get lost. So, I think I'll go this way. And then this way. Come back, Nolik. I was already here. And I was here. Oh. 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 I did get lost. You were right. What? Hey there. Do you know where Nolik is? In there. He went mummy hunting. And he got lost. Mummy? Whoa. A real one? Class. Don't. Nolik. Yoo-hoo. Are you in here? No! 
Then where? Who knows? Who builds labyrinths like this anyway? Hey, nobody asked you to go in my labyrinth. Who are you talking to in there? Digit, Fire and Nolik are inside, and I need to go to school now. Nolik! Fire! Well, I, for one, have never gotten lost in a labyrinth because I know the rule for getting out. You need to always keep your hand on the wall. I can find them for you. Where are you guys? Over here! I forgot which of these walls I was touching with my hand. Did you find them? No! And I got myself completely lost in here! Tom Thomas, you've got school today, don't you? Yeah, I do. Only I got a pyramid full of fixies. <laughs> it's like an anthill. Mm -hmm. The first one wanted to go mummy hunting. The second one went looking for the first one. And the third for both. We're lost in here! And I've got school to get to. Wait, maybe you could just try to shake them out. Good idea! <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> you have string? Watch, this way you don't get lost. When you're going on a trip, think about how to keep from getting lost and how to find your way back. Don't just rely on maps and the GPS in your phone. Take a compass with you. It will show you the cardinal directions without needing phone service. You can also find north and south by looking at the sun, stars, or even an anthill in the woods. Take a good look. The slope that's gentler faces south, and the one that's steeper faces to the north. And if you find yourself walking through a labyrinth, don't get lost. Just walk with one hand always touching the wall, and eventually you'll get out. Another way to get through a labyrinth is to tie a rope at the entrance and unreel it along the way. Then you can follow its path back out. Here's the first one. And the second. And Nolik? Oh, oh, Mummy, is it alive? It's me, Nolik. Uh. <laughs> but I couldn't find yours. That's because there's none in there. What? You mean I got lost in there for nothing? You were in such a hurry, you didn't listen to what I said. But without a mummy, how can you win? Oh, then maybe you could be my mummy. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you win a prize? Uh-huh. My pyramid won. And here's a special extra prize for being the only one of us who knew how to get out of a labyrinth. Again? Another box of those pastries? That's fine with me. I really love them. They're awesome. I wish Fixies ate food. What a shame. Then I'll give some to your mommy. 